All right. Well, the first card that comes up is the Queen of a Thames. And really, this is the Queen of Swords. This particular deck calls it the Thames card or suit. So this card is an analytical, shrewd person, an insightful, very insightful of their work. This is a definitely an air sign. So this is you guys, Gemini. It could be Gemini, uh, Libra, or Aquarius. I feel like it's totally you. It came up the first card in your reading. So it's it's telling me, indicating to me what's going on with you right now, which is that you're being very thorough and detailed. You're planning. You're in the planning stages. You know, what also comes up here is be careful about micromanaging. That's the caution to this card. Well, there's a couple cautions to this card, actually. One of them is micromanaging, over, overdoing that, or micromanaging a person. Um, the other one can be very sharp words with spouses, children, you know, when we get in a hurry, or using your words wisely. Um, but I feel a lot of you are really looking into the details of life. Actually, you know, it can be too being true to yourself and maintaining your individuality. Because you see, she's not looking at anybody else, is she? I mean, this is like she's solely focused on her work, what she's doing and what she's creating. So your individuality, Gemini, is what's marking you not marking you in a bad way, but in a good way. See the, the yellow canary? That's a, it's a, actually a, it's a gold finch, but it's a symbol of awakening and determination. So a lot of you all, whether your plans have, you know, taken off on the new year, you are bound that they will be. I mean, you're bound and determined that they will be. This gold finch, if nothing else says so. Tons of determination with you guys. Very shrewd, very much step-by-step -step planning. Okay, so it could be, you know, at the end of the year or the beginning of this year, you're really planning your ventures. You're really planning your trips. You're planning your projects. You're, you're maybe month by month or week by week. It just feels like you're paying attention to what you need to do to be successful because the next card that comes up, I love, I love, I love for you guys, is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands indicates victory and success. Public acclaim can be, public acknowledgement can be, with around your work and your achievements. See this guy riding in on this white horse he has on the red outfit, red and gold, very it's sort of accomplished and regal. And the guys standing around him, you know, are dressed more um, plain clothes, actually rather drearily, but it <laughs> it doesn't mean that, they're, uh, that that's the case. It just means that you've had support in getting to where you are in this acclaim. You know, it's not only been you, and this hasn't been the easiest of roads to travel, but you've decided that it was worth it. You've decided that it was worth the move. You decide that it was worth opening the business. You decided that it was worth stepping out of your box and creating. Um, it's interesting when I said creating just then, I literally saw someone opening a beautiful, like a lime green box and it had <laughs> like markers and crayons and really just creating a brand new palette for yourself. And when you did that, and as you've done that, you're seeing success and accomplishment. Well, you know, it would be in a creative enterprise. This, this is victory success in a creative enterprise. This is the wands card. This sparrow up here flying atop, on top of the everyone, is about assertiveness and loyalty. So you've had loyalty. You've had support. You've had followers. And I'm, I feel like I'm saying this in a very strict way. Like, you know, um, I know you're grateful. I know you're grateful for the people around you and those who support you. So I'm just feeling like I took a deep breath then. Um, so as at first I was feeling like I was like pointing my finger, like, you know, you've had support, but then I took a deep breath. It's like, you know, that, you know, that in your heart of hearts, you know, that you've, um, whether it's the kids you take care of or your subordinates, your co-workers, whoever, people have supported you. 
Yeah, you know, this could be, it can also be in games. Yeah, this can be um, sports. You could have, some of you could be in sports, like major, you know, this is coming before the Super Bowl, but I'm just saying um, NFL or any type of sport you're in, it's also what basketball season. I mean, there's ice hockey. I mean, there's many types of sports, but some of you could be in sports or you could have relatives that are really doing well and they've, they've been given a you know, huge bonus. I mean, I'm just saying things here. This That's the awesome thing that could happen or they've been acknowledged for it. Interesting. So any of you that um, are in that situation or know someone who's, or you are a sports figure, then let me know. That would be interesting. All right. And then the last card that comes up is the Standing Stone card. And I really like, it's the same as the Justice in traditional tarot. So this is about authority and legal boundaries. And I'll explain the Standing Stones were used you know, mythicism goes way back. Standing stones were used to talk to the to talk to the guards, the gods, excuse me, and arbitrate any situations that needed to be um, negotiated or any diplomacy that needed to be worked out. So the people would go around to the standing stone, and it, as you can see, this looks like a labyrinth to me. And then at the top, there's the Libra scales. So it's very much about justice. And then they would hold court. There's daisies around that. So it's very spiritual type of atmosphere. So this card shows up for you guys. And I feel like it's about being fair to yourself, but being fair to other people and feeling the balance in life. You know, making sure that your, your verbiage is balanced and true and genuine to what you're really feeling thinking about what you're saying before you expouse it. Um, we just went through a Mercury retrograde. So, you know, a lot of times during that time period, communication is off. Verbal communication. My my technologies always like to give me difficulties like my phone or my computers. And then they straighten up. After a Mercury retrograde, it's fine. <laughs> it's just funny to me. Um, but this is about fairness and justice. And signifying the path that one must follow to get to the heart of the matter. You know, this reading, um, I don't know if deep is the word, but I remember when I laid out the cards, I empathically picked the cards, choose the cards, and then I used my pendulum to ask, is this right for Gemini? Is this right for Gemini? And all three of them. And in the order, too, the sequence. And it was a yes. And I looked at the cards, and I was um, intuiting them before I turned the camera on. I was like, it feels it feels deep. It feels like this is public acclaim, yes, but there's also some inner stuff that you're acknowledging about yourself as well as other people are. If hopefully that makes sense to you. You know, and it also shows, you know, the forest here. Nature has a hand in the law. This is like the universal law, universal law of authority, universal law of balance. It's a major arcana card. It's the master number of 11. Can you see that? Master number of 11. 11 is all about service, the lighthouse of the world, the people that help others, guide others. So you could be doing that. And in so doing, you are being very balanced with your words, with your activities, with who you're associating with. You're being fair. The universe is calling you out to really justify your actions. I'm just feeling that way. You know, you all can disagree with me, but, and I don't mean that you're going to do anything that's unfair to others. I'm just saying that everything you do, you're, you're going to think, is this right for myself, right for my family, right for others, or at least the things that are important the big things in your life are going to think about that because she's planning right here. You're going to see victory. There's the balance card comes in and says, you know, we just want you to make sure that you're doing what you say you're doing. Okay. Let's pull some clarification cards that it's, it's an interesting read. So let's pull some clarification cards and see what comes up for you guys. I'm using the handsome Roberts deck for these. Well, this one off the top, 
Well, this guy's come up a couple times. He's the Page of Rods. It's coming up for you in reverse. Nor normally, this is either a very ver verbal child <laughs> um, or sudden news, creative news, um, new news, some creative activity, that, but it's new. And I'm getting some of you, it's around um, exercise, but Anyway, that's one of them. That's one of the situations that could be creative, being creative with your body, how you can use your body differently, maybe dance, maybe um, art movement. I don't know. I'm just getting a real swaying kind of feeling with this. Very interesting with the page of rods in reverse. So in reverse would mean, you know, you figured it out or, or the loud mouth kid is being quiet <laughs> and so you've had a little bit of R&R &R time or um, actually this card is sort of slanting so maybe there's news that's coming to you but it's it's you're not completely clear on it that could be it too new news that's come to you and you're wanting to focus more on how can you can how you can make it work for you the king of cups comes up well this guy is a master of his emotions He's a mentor, he's a healer, he's a counselor. And so it could be that, you know, he counsels you in this. He's warm and inviting. This is, by the way, a water sign, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. So if you know any of those, it feels like he's, he's he or she, it can be a she, but it has the indications of someone who has mastered their emotions and someone who's willing to give free of service, you know, not free, <laughs> but of service, could be. It's, it's reminds me of this 11. It just does. Healing, service. Then the Queen of Swords comes up. Okay, you guys, I, this is happening more than I can tell you. So here's the Queen of what they call Thames in this deck, and here's the Queen of Swords. That's normally what it's called. So she's come up twice. This is really about you all focusing on yourself. And like I said, it, yeah, you're going to focus quite a bit on your structure on your, and I say structure, but your plans, your details. Watch micromanaging too much yourself. Watch sinking in those details and not taking action. She, the queen loves to take action. And this one especially, see the forward movement? Where well, this one's more detailed oriented, this one's taking, she's like, she's going to slice through things. Watch your wording too. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying all the, the examples. And then the Ten of Swords comes up. Okay, so the Ten of Swords is about moving past difficult situations. You're like, done. This is done. I know this card is a little um, graphic, if you will. I don't particularly like it, but it's the typical uh, Tarot Ten of Swords. The one in this deck is completely different. But it does mean an ending to past difficulties. It's over. It's done with. You're ready to move on. Yeah, the next would be the ace, and um, or maybe you feel like someone has yes stabbed you in the back, not literally, but they've not done you right. So you're you're just past that, whatever it is, you're you're past it. The Queen of Cups comes up, so you've had the Queen and the King, interesting, and the two and all these swords. Oh, okay. So this is about your emotions as well. This is, again, is a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. Or, you know, I'm feeling with her that she's someone who's taking on those qualities. Maybe this is someone you are partnering with. I, I feel like she's just giving her love. Uh, you know, I see something different every time I look as, as far as the personality of the, the cards. I don't feel, you know, sometimes I'll feel the negative of of the the people cards, but I'm not feeling the negative of her. He can be like get into addictions and she can be a little um, over giving, you know, those type of people that are always good. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? And she's wanting to give, but I feel like she's being very concrete and solid in her, in her joy to you. So this is someone, either someone who's a water sign or someone who's taking on the qualities of a water sign. Wow. And then you have the queen of rods. All right, well, this is um, different than the water sign. This is a fire sign, Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. The queen of rods, she's in, inspirational. She's fiery. She's creative. She's passionate. She loves her home. She loves her family. She's a writer. She's um, 
well, you know, the Queen of Swords can be too. She's more scientific with this. Is, okay, so there's, say you're a writer. The Queen, if you're a Queen of Swords, it might be about analyzing um, scientific, that sort of thing. This would be more about passionate novels, that kind of writing. So this person comes up this fiery sign. Let's see a resolve card around her. Okay, so maybe you're balancing you're balancing your creativity, your emotions, your thinking. This is the balance of money, but I'm I'm just get you know, I'm getting a lot of balance. I told you earlier this is what the standing stone is about. And he's juggling here. He's balancing with his these are his emotions, the water. This is money. So um yeah. I'm going to throw this card out because it wanted to come. And, you know, this is the justice card. She came up in reverse. So this is what she looks like. This is the sk Libra scales. This is about justice, fairness, the legal system. Came up in reverse. Wow, that's interesting. It would come up near the standing stone. Well, it's the same card. <sighs> okay, that's funny. I'm laughing at myself. So... This is the Justice card in this deck. You see how different it looks? That's why sometimes when we use different decks, you guys, it's not always the easiest, even for you know readers who have been doing this for 20 or 30 years. I'm telling you, because some of these decks can be so different. But I mean, this is obviously the Justice card. She has the scales. There's the scales here. But see how different they look? So this came up in reverse. So it's really telling me that be fair to others. Be, be fair to yourself. Be balanced. Stay balanced. Because you don't want to get into this situation of being unbalanced. Okay? Not overwork. Not overplay. Not overdrink. Not overeat. Just balance. Okay. All right. Interesting, you guys. Let me add these cards up. The three original cards numerologically. That's funny this came out. It happens probably three out of the four... Um, monthly readings or mid-monthly readings I do. It happens a lot, the clarification cards matching the originals. All right, so we have the queen is a one court card, six and seven, and 11 is, 11 and seven is 18. One and eight is nine, and nine is about compassion and service to others and service to yourself and compassion to yourself. So I feel like that you all um yeah again i just keep getting this huge balance act but it's not like it feels topsy-turvy you're very well aware of it you're very well aware of where you're scattering your energies or or not scattering i did add this up right 11 and 6 is 17 18 yes okay and all right the 18 in the major arcana cards is the moon card and the moon card is trusting one's own instincts. It's about looking beneath the surface of things before making a commitment of any kind, be it in work, career, relationships, purchases, children, psychic awareness, dreams. So, you know, it's this is very much an awareness month for you guys. I don't know what else to say. That's awesome. With some, with some victory in the middle.